As sad as it sounds, Death in Naruto is handled so well it comes off like highlights in the series. Even fake out deaths like Choji in part 1 or Kakashi in the pain arc come with some of the saddest moments in the franchise. This video is going to be about my personal 5 saddest deaths in Naruto and why I think they deserve all these spots. If you have a different top 5 you can comment them below, it's not like this is an objective list or anything and I'm sure yours probably differs from mine. But before we get started we have a message from our sponsor. This video is sponsored by Poly AI, the voice assistant that's changing how we interact with technology on a whole new level. If you're looking for a smarter, more adaptive assistant, Poly AI is here to make your life easier. It's not just about giving you answers, it's about understanding how you speak and providing responses that feel natural and helpful in real time. With Poly AI, you can handle tasks, get info on the fly, or just chat when you need a break all through a voice assistant that feels more like a conversation partner. It's perfect for keeping up with your busy day, whether you're managing work, organizing personal tasks, or just exploring what cutting edge AI can do. Make sure you download Poly AI using the link in the description. Don't forget to use my promo code 6444 to unlock some exclusive features and perks. Click the link, check it out, and see how Poly AI can bring a little extra convenience to your daily routine. Obito's death marks the culmination of one of Naruto's most tragic and complex character arcs, embodying themes of lost potential, redemption, and the devastating effects of despair. As a kid, while he wasn't a genius or gifted, Obito was optimistic and determined with dreams of becoming Hokage. His journey took a dark turn during the third great ninja war where he was crushed by a boulder and presumed dead. Although he survived, he was manipulated by Madara while recovering and the true breaking point came when Obito witnessed Kakashi seemingly killing Rin, the girl he loved. Unaware that it was Rin's wish to die rather than to become a Jinchuriki weapon, Obito's ideals shattered, transforming his hope into hatred. Accepting Madara's nihilistic views as well as his identity, orchestrating events behind the scenes to bring about the moon's eye plan, his goal was to create a world without suffering, even if it meant controlling everyone through an illusion. Yet throughout his time as a villain, hints of the boy he used to be occasionally emerged, suggesting a lingering internal struggle. The turning point in Obito's redemption came during the final battle, when Naruto's unwavering belief in his friends reminded him of his own former ideals. Realizing that true peace could exist without sacrificing freedom, Obito chose to save Naruto and Kakashi from Kaguya, sacrificing himself in the process. His final conversation with Kakashi acknowledged his regrets and served as a great closure for the rivalry and friendship. Obito's death to me is particularly tragic due to the what ifs surrounding this story. What if he hadn't been crushed? What if Rin had lived? What if he had returned to Konoha as a hero? His path illustrates how grief, loss, and manipulation can lead someone astray, but also that redemption remains possible, even for those who seem too far gone. In the end, his sacrifice demonstrated that the boy who once wanted to be a hero still existed beneath the layers of darkness. His final act wasn't just a redemptive gesture, but also a message about the enduring struggle between despair and hope, and the power of choosing the light even in one's darkest moment. Obito's story isn't just about his death, it's a narrative about the search for redemption, the consequences of lost ideals, and the hope that no matter how far someone has fallen, they can still find their way back. I know this next spot is a fake out death, but when I was first watching through Naruto, this one hit me particularly hard because Kakashi is not only my favorite character in Naruto, he's my second favorite fictional character of all time behind Goku. And his death during the pain arc is a crucial moment in the series, shedding light on his character's deeper struggles. By the time this event occurs, Kakashi had already lived through immense loss and hardship, shaping him into the calm, composed ninja he's known as. His background is steeped in tragedy, starting with the death of his father, Sakamo, who took his own life after being ostracized for prioritizing his comrades over the mission. This left a lasting scar on Kakashi, setting the stage for the rigid, rule-abiding shinobi he would become. These losses didn't stop there, Kakashi later witnessed his teammate Obito being crushed by a boulder and had to deliver the fatal blow to Ren, although without his consent. 
another teammate under heartbreaking circumstances. By the time of the pain arc, Kakashi is not just a veteran Jonin, but someone carrying the weight of these past tragedies. His apparent death during his confrontation with pain felt like the culmination of a life filled with sacrifice. During the fight, Kakashi uses nearly all of his chakra to protect Choji, the village, and collapsing shortly afterwards. After he drifts into what appears to be the afterlife, he meets his father, Sakumo, for the first time since his childhood. This encounter is significant because Kakashi has never truly processed his father's death. Sakumo's choice to abandon the mission to save his comrades, which led to disgrace in his eventual suicide, had been a source of unresolved pain for years. Kakashi internalized the idea that his father was a failure, which influenced his strict adherence to the Shinobi Code. Their conversation in the afterlife serves as a moment of catharsis for Kakashi. For the first time, he can confront these buried emotions and forgive his father. This interaction brings a sense of closure to one of the longest running threads in Kakashi's character arc, allowing him to reconcile his father's choice with his own experience as a shinobi. In this moment, Kakashi realizes the true value of placing his comrades above the mission, something Sakumo had always believed, but that Kakashi had only begun to accept after the death of his friend Obito. While Kakashi is revived by Nagato's Rene rebirth, the emotional impact of his apparent death remains significant, at least to me. It shows just how close he came to sharing the same fate as so many other shinobi who died for the village. The scene isn't just about Kakashi nearly losing his life, it's about him finding the strength to finally heal from his past. It emphasizes the ongoing struggle between duty and personal values conflict that has shaped his character since childhood. And had this not been a fake out death, this would 100% be the saddest death in Naruto for me personally. Itachi is who I have in the third spot and he gets a pretty unfair advantage here. He's the only character in Naruto to have two separate death scenes that mean something. His first death scene isn't even all that sad. It's more or less what happens afterwards that makes it extremely sad and the impact that it had on Sasuke. Because the truth behind Itachi's life finally coming to light. For years, Itachi was painted as a villain, the older brother who slaughtered his entire clan, leaving Sasuke with nothing but a burning desire for revenge. But as the series unfolds, the layers of Itachi's story are gradually peeled back, revealing that his actions were never as simple as they seemed. The massacre wasn't a decision made out of malice or a desire for power, it was a mission forced upon him by the higher ups in the village to prevent a coup that could have led to a civil war. By the time we get to this final battle with Sasuke, Itachi is already a man living on borrowed time. He's suffering from a terminal illness, pushing his body to its limits to give Sasuke the fight he always wanted. But even in his last moments, Itachi holds back just enough, ensuring that his brother would be the one to deliver the final blow, essentially. That iconic moment when he reaches out and pokes Sasuke's forehead, just like he did when they were kids shows that despite everything, his love for his younger brother never wavered. Tachi's actions throughout his life were motivated by a desire to protect Sasuke and ensure he would grow strong enough to survive in a dangerous world. The real tragedy of Itachi's story is that he carried the burden of what happened to the Uchiha clan all alone. Of course, Obito did help him with the eventual slaughter of the clan, but that's hardly someone Itachi would ever consider a friend and hardly someone that bat an eye twice at killing the entire clan. Itachi chose to live as a traitor to the village and his family to ensure peace. He accepted being hated and misunderstood to keep his younger brother safe, never once revealing the truth to Sasuke, even as he was dying. The reveal of his true motivations after his death hit Sasuke hard, leading him to question everything he ever thought he knew. It was no longer just about avenging his clan, it became about avenging a brother who had sacrificed everything for his sake. Itachi's story is a tragic exploration of sacrifice, duty, and the bonds of family. His death wasn't just a passing of a character, but the unmasking of a hero who lived in the shadows. It served as a catalyst for Sasuke's transformation, pushing him onto a path of darkness, but also setting the stage for his eventual redemption. In the end, Itachi's legacy is one of hidden love and the painful choices made for the sake of peace, making his death one of the most impactful in the series. 
Minito and Kushina have some of the most heartbreaking deaths in all of Naruto, not just for the village that they literally died to protect, but for the son that they left behind. On the night of Naruto's birth, the peace of Konoha was completely broken when Obito, as a nameless terrorist, unleashed the Nine Tails, setting the stage for disaster. What makes Minato and Kushina's sacrifices particularly devastating is how in a matter of hours they went from the joy of welcoming their first child into the world to the tragic reality of having to give their lives to protect him. As the chaos unfolded, Minato and Kushina faced the near impossible task of simultaneously defending the village, subduing the tailed beast, and saving their newborn son. Even though they were two of the most powerful shinobi in Konoha, the situation left them with only one choice, to seal Kurama inside of Naruto. Knowing that it would leave their son an orphan, which makes that decision even more painful, it's the love and sacrifice they both show as parents, as they prepared to use their remaining chakra to perform the sealing jutsu. They weren't just sealing a demon, they were sealing their hope for their future inside the child entrusting Naruto with a power that would help him survive a world filled with danger. This scene is made even more heartbreaking by Kushina's final act of using her body as a shield to protect Naruto from Ninetales Claw. This wasn't just a mother protecting her child, it was a final desperate act of love, showing that even in her dying moments, her instinct was to keep her son safe at all costs. Her sacrifice is the ultimate expression of parental love, and it's a reminder of just how much Naruto lost before he even had a chance to know his parents. Their last words to Naruto elevate the emotional depth of the moment. With time running out, Kushina imparts all the advice and wisdom she can, sharing her hopes, dreams, and regrets. She speaks to Naruto with a mother's tenderness, offering him guidance for a lifetime she knows she won't be there to see. Minito adds his own final message, expressing pride in their son and confidence and strength Naruto would one day develop. It's a powerful farewell that serves not just as a parting gift to Naruto, but as a lasting legacy that would go on to shape the kind of person he would become. The impact of their loss is felt throughout the entire series. Growing up without them left Naruto with an unfillable void, shaping his early years and driving his desire to find acceptance. Minato and Kushina's sacrifices went beyond saving the village. They were also the ultimate expressions of love and hope for their son, believing that he would one day overcome the darkness they gave their lives to protect him from. And for number one, and I'm sure to at least a few people's surprise, I have Jiraiya. I've been pretty critical of Jiraiya in the past, saying that I don't like him very much. However, this is talking about sad deaths, not just my favorite character's deaths. So yeah, Jiraiya is here. Uh, not only because of his status as a beloved character, but because of the profound impact his loss had on the series and its central characters. From the start, Jiraiya was more than just a powerful shinobi. He was a mentor, a father figure, and a source of guidance for Naruto. His carefree attitude, the optimism he had, and wisdom kind of made him stand out as one of the most relatable and endearing characters, but beneath all that lighthearted nature was a man who had experienced a lifetime of loss and regret, making his final moments all the more tragic. Obviously, this all came to be during his mission to infiltrate the Rain Village, where he sought to uncover information about the Akatsuki and the leader of the Akatsuki Pain. Uh, knowing the risk, Jiraiya was fully aware that this mission could very well be his last, still he pressed on with a sense of duty and determination, driven by his desire to protect the village and ensure Naruto's safety. As he confronted Pain, it quickly became evident that this was a battle unlike any other. Pain, who was revealed to be his former student Nagato, wielded the Renegon, one of the most powerful dojutsu in the world. The revelation that Jiraiya's own teachings had inadvertently contributed to the rise of the Akatsuki made the confrontation even more emotionally charged. It wasn't just a fight against an enemy, it was a clash between the ideals of a teacher and the path taken by his student. Throughout the intense battle, Jiraiya used every ounce of his strength, employing powerful techniques and summoning the great Toad Sages to help him strategize and enter Sage Mode. 
Despite his best efforts, he was ultimately overwhelmed by the combined power of the six paths of pain and a cruel twist of fate. The man who had trained Nagato to use his abilities for peace was now facing the very power he had helped cultivate. The battle took a severe toll on Jiraiya with him losing an arm and being gravely injured, but even when his chances of survival were slim, he refused to give up. His resilience in the face of overwhelming odds embodied his ninja way, a refusal to turn back no matter how desperate the situation. What makes Jiraiya's death particularly devastating is the way he faced it. As he laid on the ground, barely clinging to life, he reflected on his own journey, lamenting his failures and the mistakes he had made. He considered himself a loser for never achieving his dream of bringing peace to the world or winning the heart of his longtime love Tsunade. Yet in his final moments, he found a sense of closure and hope in Naruto. The boy that had once been his less than intelligent student had grown into someone who could truly change the world. Jiraiya's final act was to etch a crucial message into the back of Fukusaku, one of the Toad Sages, providing the key information that would eventually help Naruto understand Pain's secret. It was a final gesture of defiance and duty, showing that even at the brink of death, Jiraiya's resolve never faltered. The imagery of Jiraiya sinking into the depths of water with his life fading away is symbolic of his journey coming full circle. He had lived a life filled with ups and downs, but he found peace in knowing that he had a legacy left behind. His death wasn't just about the loss of a powerful ninja, it was also about the loss of a guiding light for Naruto. For the first time, Naruto experienced the pain of losing someone he considered family pushing him to mature and become even stronger. Jiraiya's sacrifice served as a catalyst for Naruto's growth, inspiring him to continue the mission his mentor couldn't complete. Jiraiya's death is more than just a turning point in the story, it's a powerful reminder of the series' themes of resilience, the pursuit of dreams, and the cost of the ninja way. It's a testament to Jiraiya's character that even in death, he continued to impact the lives of those around him, proving that a true ninja's legacy endures far beyond their final moments.